Hi, so I'm going to go through step by step how to create a Redis cache and then also changing the ASP.NET web application code from an in-process session state to a out-of-process Redis cache state provider. So uh, let me get started here and create a Redis cache in Azure. So I'm going to click New and I'm going to click Data Storage and select Redis Cache and I simply type in a name I'm going to name this Red Skull place it in a resource group and that's really it I'm, I'm just gonna click create so you could choose different standards in this case my cache is going to be 99.9% .9 available by the SLA so I'm going to click deploy here and that takes about a good 10 minutes to create now as that's being created I am going to pull up the ASP.NET code so this is the code you see here and this is a ASP.NET MVC 5 application so let me show you how that actually looks so this is your normal MVC5 ASP.NET template and I am going to be converting this from an in-process to a Redis cache session provider so I'm going to pull up the code again and the first thing I'm going to do is go to tools go to the NuGet package and I'm going to use the GUI and search for Redis session and the one I'm going to choose is actually the Microsoft Web Redis Session Provider. And this is going to use the StackExchange.Redis modules. So once I've selected this, I'm just simply going to click Install. And when I click Install, it will actually insert the dependencies into my web Dot config. I'm going to click uh, yes to reload and you could there's links here where you could search for extra information I'm just going to go straight to web.config and it has a template here and what I'm going to do is create the Redis session provider node here so there's a bunch of there's a template provider here and it says I could use the connection string or I could use these parameters I choose to use the connection string because that's what's in Azure so if I go back to Azure I actually already have a session a Redis cache here and I'm gonna pull up the one I've already set up and it's called Firestorm you see it's the Redis cache and in the access keys when I click access keys here you'll notice there's going to be a connection string and this connection string is specifically for the stack exchange.redis modules so I'm going to copy I'm going to copy this go back to my code and simply paste it in the connection string attribute make sure to have the type here also so this is going to be my redis cache session state provider so once I have this I'm actually going to deploy it up in my Azure VMs so if I bring up my Azure VMs you'll notice I have it deployed in my IAS and I'm going to show you in Azure here that my three VMs are actually load balance so if you want to learn how to set up a load balancer with uh, the uh, three servers here like I have distributed across the load balancers 
uh, look at look for my video on how to do that with the load balancers. So notice in my back end pools, I'll have the three web servers, Firestorm, Iron Man, Silver Surfer. And under my load balancing rules, those three servers are distributed without session persistence, meaning that the there's not going to be sticky sessions so if if the if there's a browser request it's not going to look at the IP address and uh, redirect it to the same server all the time it's going to distribute it likely round robin or whatever algorithm it has to the three servers that I have listed which is why it's important for me to have a caching or session that is outside of the process such that when it do, when the request doesn't come from the same server the sessions are still existing so so you notice here I, I already have the application deployed I call it awesome web application and if you look at my web.config you'll notice two things I have this redis cache session provider here and I also have the machine key now the machine key is important to set up so if you go into IAS and I click on the application here and I go to machine key you notice I have to put the same machine key across all three of the load balance servers so this is Iron Man here that I'm or, or that this is Firestorm that I'm on I'm gonna go up to my server Iron Man and you'll see in my IAS instance for Iron Man I also have the same set, uh, machine key and if I go to my other load balance server Silver Surfer I have the same machine key here so this is uh, the server Silver Surfer so make sure you do these three things here definitely the session key uh, the machine key which actually decrypts the session key and does the lookup into the Redis cache. So how does that look from a from the client? So so if I go to the web application, I'm gonna log off here. You notice in the bottom here I actually have a label that identifies which server the page is being served up. So I'm gonna log in and I'm gonna show you that even though the load balancer goes across different servers that the session is retained because I'm using the session provider Redis cache as the session provider so I'm gonna log in here and at this point a session is created and it's logging in so now now I'm logged in here and you notice the servers are in man. If I click refresh to go to another server, you see now it's Silver Surfer, yet the session is still retained. If I click on about, it goes switches to another server and the session again is retained. If I keep on hitting refresh and cycle through all three servers, now it's Silver Surfer. Now it's Iron Man. And you'll see up here the session is still retained now it's Firestorm so all three servers have served up a different page but the session has been retained so how does that look in Redis so if I go to my Redis cache and you'll see this is the Redis cache and I named it Firestorm and I'm gonna click on the console here and I'm gonna list all the clients you notice there's a connection from Firestorm Silver Surfer and Iron Man and if I list all the keys I only have one session you'll see this is actually the session key here so that's how it looks in Redis so the sessions are being maintained right now in Redis as you can see from this console
Now if I go back here to the settings once again, you, you'll see that the primary port here is the 6380. So you see this is the SSL access port. And if I go back to my code here, you could see this is the port that's referenced in the connection string. And this password here is the key that is also in the access keys here. So this is the key up here that is actually in this connection string that I copied uh, straight from here. So that's really it. That, that's how you set up Redis with your MVC5 ASP.NET application and have it load balanced across servers in a IS web farm and have it retain the session state and have it very highly scalable uh, using this type of architecture uh, which is uh, fairly simple uh, to do so uh, hope this helps and thank you for watching